Hi guys, tough here. I know that all of us were hoping that 2020 ends on a healthy note for all of us and I hope uh, you and your loved ones are in great shape. But uh, one thing we realized that uh, things are not going to stop and uh, the exam is uh, looming at us and we must read very well for the exams. And for that, uh, whatever reading you've done in these tough times, there is a very important exercise to revise what you've read. Now, that's what is very tough. Sometimes revising is extremely boring and you have to push yourself to revise. Now, whenever you revise, give yourself 24 hours from what you've read. You must give 24 hours gap before you start revising that and uh, that is known to help you re-implant whatever information you got in that time to make sure that you can have a good assimilation of the topic which you read 24 hours back. Apart from that, I feel that there are some topics in Obzin Gaini which you cannot do without and there are some topics which you should have a look and uh, the recent topics which have been coming, you must have a look at them also. So when we are reading obstetrics in Gaini, in obstetrics, more importantly than gynae, because obs is something which we practice regularly, we go to the labor rooms, as interns also we have done our duties in the labor rooms and that is why obstetrics always comes as a clinical question very regularly and uh, something about obstetrics is a sure shot question and that is the surveillance topic. Surveillance which is antepartum or intrapartum, please do not miss on that topic because they will definitely ask you a question on NST or a biophysical profile or a Doppler and they will also ask you a question on intrapartum surveillance like the cardiotocography or even a scalp blood pH. So, please do have a look on the surveillance because surveillance will help us manage patients with complications like GDM, or PIH or IUGR, whatever complications are there, surveillance is the tool which helps us manage these patients. That is what is actually obstetrics. We have been discussing about that earlier, is not it? Apart from that, uh, do read about ectopic pregnancy and something about uh, prenatal diagnosis. Uh, prenatal diagnosis and the uh, triple markers, quadruple marker, definitely NIPT and uh, the uh, amniocentesis, chordocentesis. These are the topics which do find their place uh, quite frequently and uh, abortion especially about the medical abortion because ever since uh, India approved about the medical abortion especially till the first seven weeks of gestation and that uh, uh, you know uh, methods of doing medical abortion and the drugs which we can use and the uh, precautions of doing an ultrasound before we do the medical abortion these are things which they ask you about and these are the topics you must know before you go for the exam and one malpresentation one malposition and um, I can tell you I, this is a sure shot question uh, malposition is always and almost always occipital posterior. So, do read about that and revise it on the app if you want and um, the drugs for preterm labor is a, a regular question and um, antipartum hemorrhage is something if you do not read about antipartum hemorrhage then I think uh, the last two years whatever questions are coming those you are going to miss the marks definitely because this is one topic which has found more favor even than postpartum hemorrhage. Postpartum hemorrhage keeps coming uh, in every alternate exam but antipartum hemorrhage is part of almost all the exams. So, these are the topics you must know in obstetrics before you go and in gynecology CA cervix, CA endometrium like the back of your hand. Definitely the staging also in full detail, C cervix more than C endometrium, but mind you, they will ask you C endometrium also. Just because C cervix is the most common cancer in gynecology in women in India, that does not mean that they cannot ask you questions on C endometrium. They can ask you and uh, remember C endometrium is something which happens to well-to-do healthy women, obesity and diabetes, mellitus, hypertension, etc, etc. And uh, one question on Muller anomalies, something about intersex and uh, C vulva. Now, C vulva is something which uh, we actually, when we took the live classes, we sometimes we never taught you. That is a confession I am doing because C A vulva actually never came in the exams. But now, the FMG guys, you guys are getting this more than the PG entrance guys and the PG entrance guys also got it this year. So, last two years, it has become a hot shot favorite and questions are regularly coming on C A vulva. So, do have a look on this topic because uh, it is something which is a little tough to remember. So, might as well do the tough things before you go for the easier ones. So, do read about C A vulva and uh, what you cannot ignore is COVID. Now, COVID is something which we have made a special uh, mention in the app now and we have also done in the rapid revision. Definitely read about the COVID in pregnancy and all the information which is uh, given to you and read about PIH, 
GDM and IUGR as a routine because these are easy topics. So, they should be easy to revise also for you guys. And uh, sterilization surgeries, tubectomies, vasectomies. I mean, we always read about tubectomies, but we forget about vasectomies. So, do read about vasectomies and uh, in contraception, uh, the OC pills, the combined oral contraceptive pills, always find some mention somewhere and the complications as, uh, associated with the combined oral contraceptive pills. So, do have a look on them. And one topic which is very close to my heart and uh, often finds uh, mention in your exams is the RH incompatibility and the various aspects of managing a, a baby who is born with RH, uh, a mother with RH incompatibility. A lot of talk is going about the, uh, you know, the dose of entity to be given and the timing of entity to be given and uh, we have done a lot of discussion about that in the app and uh, also in the prep ladder forum i've been constantly discussing this with you people so that you don't have a, a problem with rh incompatibility because this is a complicated topic but if we read about this from the you know beginning till the end in the way we have given then i hope it will become a little easier for you if you revise on the app once more before you go for the exam and in the gynecology the topics which you definitely should not ignore is PCOS and it is now uh, discussed so much that I feel it is one of the easier topics to uh, attempt uh, the answers for and uh, along with that endometriosis and uh, the uh, complications of uh, uh, giving ovarian uh, stimulation for IVF that is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Definitely read about uh, the pubertal changes and uh, the timings of things which are appearing and about endometriosis also along with endometriosis do have a look at adenomyosis because they are almost the same kind of etiology and the management is almost on the same lines but yes we must remember endometriosis is for the women who are not getting pregnant and adenomyosis for the women who got pregnant many times it happens mostly in multiparous women so uh, keeping that basic in mind uh, both of these uh, endometriosis and endomyosis have almost the same etiology that's why you must read about them and uh, they will definitely find a mention either one of them in your exams and uh, something which is coming in infertility is male infertility topics more than the general infertility topics and uh, the female infertility topics have been beaten to pulp so many times that now they are asking you about the um, semen analysis in a new way and uh, the uh, ways of uh, assessing a man's uh, fertility whether it is a pre-testicular or testicular failure all of that we have discussed in the app and whether we can manage a person with uh, obstructed azoospermia by testicular aspirations and what all we can do with the aspirated sperms and what kind of uh, procedures we can do with those sperms. So, that is why this uh, male infertility has found more mention than just the complete infertility topic these days and um, when you have all of this in your mind then um, definitely try and revise the last two years question papers and uh, of all the exams you know now of course you have the exams combined you know the institute of national importance have become one exam and NEET has become one exam so next year onwards you'll have only two question papers to revise but till this year you have you know four different papers to revise so please try and get the last two years question papers uh, and look at the topics which have come don't miss a topic that's where i feel that sometimes we get a little frustrated because uh, you know that these topics were asked and you could not read them so don't uh, do the mistake of not reading the recent topics which have come and uh, once you have that kind of information then you can appear for the exam in a much better way uh, needless to say that whatever was taught to you people you should be able to revise everything but then uh, you know you definitely feel that okay one week before the exam if i pick up the books of obs and gyne and then in that one or two days if i have to give just to obs and gyne what should i revise that's why i've given you a list that don't leave your room without reading these topics which i've given you but uh, there's another way out to uh, you know if you actually did not like anything which I told you today and you feel that uh, there were so many topics which sir told and is almost uh, all the important topics he said that we should be revising then there is a quick way out of all of this and that is the rapid revision and if you have it then I think in 12 to 13 hours you can finish whole of Ops and Gyne just play it sit up in your chair and uh, just go through this rapid revision topic uh, of um, all the major things which I have taught you and I think that in that you should be able to manage most of your questions at least 80 to 85 percent of questions do come from the major topics and the rapid revision topics which we have discussed. So, if you do that then I think you should be able to do your exam very well. So, do write the exam with a uh, intent that you have read very hard and it's time to deliver. 
I mean, you know, if I say that don't get psyched out and don't get tense, stay positive. These are very f famous words which are repeated every now and then by all your friends around you and your parents and your teachers. But till you do not get tense, how will you read for an exam? Do get tense. Do get tense. Do get worked up. If you are worried, then you will read harder and you will revise better. If you don't get tense, then you will be laid back. So, being laid back is one attitude which can be uh, afforded by people who are extremely good in their books and that's that one percent of students. Those one percent of students actually are not listening to me right now. They have already prepared very well and they can go and get the seats easily. Rest 99 percent people like you and me, we should get a little tense and go and do a good revision of what all I told you. Otherwise, read the rapid revision good way out of troubled waters all right so best wishes for exam do very well and write back to us probably by march april next year and tell us that all of you got what you wanted in your life all right and god bless you for that